Wu-Tang Clan, where do you even start? The story of Wu-Tang Clan is a continual story of flipping the norm, doing it your own way, and thinking long-term. Wu-Tang is Voltron. Wu-Tang is genius branding. Wu-Tang is metal sharpening metal. And Wu-Tang's debut album, Enter the Wu-Tang 36 Chambers, is like starting at the end and working backwards. Actually, starting at the end makes the most sense for this video. Wu-Tang started at the end and moved backwards from there, so I'm gonna do the same thing. To start, here's the ending quote for this video. There were five albums that came out after that first album, and they were all from the direct plan we were working on from the beginning. For the first five albums, up through Wu-Tang Forever, everything went exactly as planned. That's the end, and that's where we're starting. Here's the rest of the video. We're gonna talk about the formation of the mighty Wu-Tang Clan, specifically their debut album, Enter the Wu-Tang 36 Chambers, break down the production and recreate a couple songs from this classic album, see the power of the group, the branding of Wu-Tang, and how the plan from the very beginning was to do everything backwards. You ready? Let's start with the mastermind behind the plan, the RZA. In 1991, under the name Prince Rakim, he signed a single deal with Tommy Boy Records with an option for an album, but Tommy Boy never picked it up. Around this time, RZA started producing much more of his own music. As he recalled, I started doing my own sh because most producers weren't matching rappers for the rhymes they had. They'd just throw a beat at them and expect them to do all the work and match things up. I'd always have to travel around to different producers' houses to make my rhymes and demos and songs. I was an MC first and a producer second, but I just started making beats that I could rhyme to every time. Being an MC first definitely made me become a better hip hop producer. Meanwhile, another MC's, RZA's cousin Jizza, released a full-length album titled Words from the Genius, but after being dissatisfied with the label, he left. RZA and Jizza having bad experiences with music labels would eventually lead to the unique arrangement of the Wu-Tang Clan, but we'll get there in a moment. During the late 80s and early 90s, RZA had many MCs come through his home studio, many which ended up being members of the Wu-Tang Clan. He was also in a few other groups, like All In Together Now with Jizza and Old Dirty Bastard, but there was one night in particular that would forever change the future of these MCs, and eventually hip-hop in general. RZA said, you guys do this for fun every day, but are you ready to do this for real? And he put this elaborate vision on the table. I wasn't even able to see it at that point, but I saw it through him because he was so sure of it. Eventually, me hooking up with RZA and You Got Every Day is what formed the Wu-Tang Clan, with all the other guys who were making their way in. We didn't have to come together and form a group, we was really already there the whole time. This elaborate vision, RZA's master plan, took a backwards approach to how many record contracts work, but would prove to be a crucial part of the success of the Wu-Tang Clan. More on their record deal in a minute. First, let's talk about the members of the Wu-Tang Clan. While there had been hip hop groups with multiple MCs before, Wu-Tang's approach was different. Get as many hard hitting MCs together as possible, blow the roof off the thing from the start, and then just keep going. Wu-Tang Clan comprised of RZA, Jizza, Old Dirty Bastard, Method Man, Raekwon, Ghostface Killer, Inspector Deck, You God, and Master Killer brought together nine MCs who could all hold their own without the group. Even if you had just two or three of them together, it would be great. So bringing nine MCs together like this is insane. And then you match that with RZA's production. For one, it's gritty, dirty, and it sounds very underground. RZA used a lot of soul samples, but reworks them to sound much grittier and harder, matching the energy of the MCs rapping on top. 36 Chambers opens with Bring the Ruckus, which samples from Melvin Bliss as well as the dramatics, but it's layered with a snare that's made by putting a mic inside a paint bucket and smacking the top. The song Wu-Tang Clan Ain't Nothing to F*** With, which if you don't know anything about Wu-Tang, you at least know that, samples the theme from Underdog. Okay, this is gonna be a quick and dirty version of the song. There's a lot more happening with other layers of samples, but basically, we've got this underdog sample. Pitch it down. We've also got the second part. Let's add drums on top. On the simpler side, take the song Cream. This song samples As Long As I've Got You by the Charmels from 1967, pitching it up a bit, chopping a few sections, and adding an additional kick drum. The production here is simple, yet effective. Other songs on the album feature much more involved sampling with lots of small samples, added hits, and so many layers that it's gonna have to be in future videos. Whenever I use copyrighted music in a video like I just did, that means that YouTube is probably gonna catch it and I can't monetize it. So I'd like to say a quick thank you to Tracklib for sponsoring this video. 
Tracklib is an online record store for sampling which has a growing catalog of more than 80,000 original songs and multi-tracks to sample with a 100% guarantee of fast, easy, affordable clearance. But let me make something and show you how it actually works. I'm going to search specifically for something 70s soul. Alright, we got a 60s, 70s soul and funk collection. <laughs> Already I'm excited, but you can take it a step further than that before you actually download it. In the browser, I can re-pitch it, I can loop it, and I can add a beat on top of it. So let's see what that would sound like. All right, I'm happy with this. I'm gonna use one of my credits and download it. All right, I'll keep messing around with this, but when I'm ready to release it, Tracklib makes licensing super easy. Everything in the library is guaranteed for a fast, affordable clearance. If you want to get started yourself, click the sign up link in the description. You'll get 15 tracks to download for free, plus a 30 day trial, which is double the typical trial. And then there's the Kung Fu. There are samples from Kung Fu movies throughout the album, lyrical quotes, and that's where the name Wu-Tang Clan comes from. RZA is a huge fan of Kung Fu movies, so much so that he made it a central part of the Wu-Tang mythology. The name Enter the Wu-Tang 36 Chambers comes from the movies Enter the Dragon and the 36th Chamber of Shaolin. Wu-Tang members Master Killer and Ghostface Killer get their names from Kung Fu movies, and the name Wu-Tang Clan comes from another movie. As RZA explains, Wu-Tang Clan's name is pulled from Shaolin vs. Wu-Tang because of the best sword technique that they showed, and our reason that our tongue is like a sword. If you think you're the best lyricist, you must be using the Wu-Tang sword. And so we're the Wu-Tang Clan. We thought we were the best lyricists in hip-hop. The interview that quote is pulled from is incredible. RZA breaks down a bunch of different kung fu movies he sampled, and his passion for kung fu movies is obvious. The fact that he managed to roll his love for kung fu movies into a hip-hop group is amazing. This is another thing that's so unique about Wu-Tang Clan, the branding. Through the name of the group, the name of some of the MCs, the kung fu samples throughout 36 Chambers, and later albums as well, it creates this whole mystique around the group, a larger-than-life quality. This branding would prove to be an important part of Wu-Tang. It's not just the gritty production or the nine incredible MCs, Sees, there's also kung fu in the mix. It's so in your face, so unapologetically hard, and there's this whole mysterious, what the hell is this quality to it, in a way that draws you in. Just look at the album cover. Who is this group? As Inspector Deck elaborates, there was a mystique about the group when Protect Your Neck and the album was out. I mean, we were wearing stocking caps on the cover. We didn't care if people saw our faces. It wasn't a fashion show. We weren't trying to be the richest dudes. Nobody knew us, but they knew of us. They knew the name. And that was powerful. Speaking of Protect Your Neck, that was the first step in the master plan. This was the first single by the Wu-Tang Clan. It featured everyone except Master Killer, so eight MCs on one song. It's unapologetically in your face and it makes a statement. It's announcing the Wu-Tang Clan to the world, a large group of heavy hitting MCs all teamed up from the beginning. Each MC brings something different to the track and the verses just keep coming. At this point, there was no label. Everything was done in-house. The cassette just had RZA's phone number on the back, and for promo, it was just a bunch of dudes driving around in a van, selling them for a couple bucks or handing them out for free. Soon, they started to get the attention of major labels, but they eventually landed on Loud Records because they allowed Wu-Tang their unique label arrangement. But before we talk about those specifics, here's an incredible story from Loud's founder and president, Steve Rifkind. A copy of Protect Your Neck was sent to Steve by someone on his street team, and next thing I know, the group, yes, all of them, showed up at my office. We put on the record and a guy from the mailroom came running into my office and yells, that's that sh and then he ran out. To this day, I've never seen him again. After that, I knew that Wu-Tang was doing something pretty big. I didn't really care how many copies of Protect Your Neck they'd sold on their own, I was convinced purely by their energy. I want to know the story of that mailroom guy. Did he quit his job after this? Was he actually a plant sent there by Wu-Tang to hype up the meeting? I have to know. Anyway, the unique thing about Wu-Tang's label arrangement is this. Every other label they had met with wanted to sign Wu-Tang as well as every individual member. But RZA's master plan was bigger than that. He was insistent that each individual member be able to sign with whoever they want, and finally Loud Records would be the label to not only agree, but understand the larger vision. Steve Rifkin says that he'd meet with RZA regularly 
family and agreed to just about everything because RZA came in like a businessman and made it as easy as possible. This would lead to the debut album, Enter the Wu-Tang, 36 Chambers, and a string of solo albums from individual members of the Wu-Tang Clan. This is all part of RZA's backwards master plan. I say it's backwards because Wu-Tang is really a musical supergroup, and the way that's often done is to start out first with solo careers and then team up to make an album after. But RZA's vision for Wu-Tang was exactly backwards from that. Start with the supergroup album. Start with this big mysterious group. Nine incredible MCs, gritty paint bucket drums, in your face sound and lyrics. I mean, one of their songs is literally called Wu-Tang Clan Ain't Nothing to with. Mix that with some martial arts and you're not only going wide, you're going deep. This album, 36 Chambers, hit number 8 on the hip hop charts and sales wise has gone triple platinum. A lot of people have listened to this album, but there's so much to Wu-Tang. Nine individual MCs, each with a unique style, the production, the kung fu, the mystique, that's the deeper part. Wu-Tang Clan has created their own little universe where you can go visit. RZA knew the power of branding in this way and the power of the group. While Protect Your Neck features eight of the nine members of Wu-Tang, the rest of the 36 Chambers album features a few MCs per track. They get to stretch out their legs a little more and you get to know each MC and their style a little better throughout the rest of the album. And because there's only so many verses on so many songs, there's a little bit of healthy competition in the group which just makes each MC work harder and the best they can be. RZA has described this process like monks training with each other or like sharpening metal against metal. The healthy competition among the nine MCs on this album made each individual MC better. And then there's the fact that 36 Chambers has a bunch of unreleased verses. Inspector Deck described this process, noting that on the song Cream, originally he and Raekwon recorded four verses each to a different beat. RZA then took their best two verses each, with Method Man on the chorus, and as he describes it, sat down with all the puzzle pieces. This happened often on many songs with each MC. So it's not only that you've got nine incredible MCs, it's not only that there's healthy competition between them, making them work harder and level up their lyrics. But on top of that, RZA is selecting only the best verses from each MC, changing his own beat underneath until it feels right. And speaking of these individual MCs, here's where it all comes together. RZA specifically wouldn't sign Wu-Tang to a label unless they agreed to let the individual members sign their own deals with whatever labels they wanted. Loud Records was happy to make that deal, and as a result put out Enter the Wu-Tang 36 Chambers in 1993, but then in the four years that followed, Method Man, Old Dirty Bastard, Raekwon, Jizza, and Ghostface Killer all put out solo albums. These were all on different different record labels with individual deals, but it was almost all produced by RZA. Then in 1997, Wu-Tang released Wu-Tang Forever, bringing them all back together for another group album. Other Wu-Tang members understood this vision early on. Inspector Deck said, RZA told us that we could get 100,000 or 200,000 each for a solo deal, but together we could make millions. And he was right. Jizza said, we didn't get any money at all from that first album. We may have gotten 50,000 for an advance for the whole thing. But with our solo deals, we all got to spread out and make our loot. This was the plan that RZA laid out to inspect a deck early on, to Loud Records, and to the rest of the Wu-Tang Clan. RZA's master plan for Wu-Tang was backwards from the normal supergroup. Start with an insane amount of talent, nine MCs, and make an incredible album full of gritty production, incredible verses, and kung fu influence and mystique. Give people a lot to latch onto. But then follow that up with a string of solo releases that continues on the Wu-Tang mythology. This is like if Marvel started with Avengers Endgame and then did the individual Iron Man or Captain America movies after that. It's completely backwards, completely brilliant, and it worked. Now let's circle back on that quote we started with at the beginning. There were five albums that came out after that first album, and they were all from the direct plan we were working on from the beginning. For the first five albums up through Wu-Tang Forever, everything went exactly as planned. Wu-Tang is like Voltra individual incredible MCs coming together to form a supergroup from the beginning. They flipped the normal way of doing things in their label deal, the group structure, the production, and this established Wu-Tang Clan as a force to be reckoned with, or I guess rather nothing to f*** with, and a big part of the East Coast hip-hop renaissance of the 90s. Another MC who began in this era and had a huge influence was Nas, who released his debut album Illmatic in 1994. This album features the song New York State of Mind, produced by DJ Premier, which completely redefined the term. But for that story, you gotta watch this video. 